In 1874, a large gathering of Ballarat dignitaries and townsfolk watched the ceremonial laying of a foundation stone on a parcel of land in Lydiard Street. The owners of the land, the wealthy Clark family, had instructed their architect George Diamond Brown to build a theatre worthy of the successful gold mining town. Just nine months later, the Academy of Music held its successful opening night. The show? The French comedic opera, La Fille de Madame Manjot. The building is now known as Her Majesty's Theatre Ballarat, arguably Australia's longest continually operating theatre with a famed rake stage and unmatched architectural beauty. Her Majesty's Theatre is, is the beating heart as far as I'm concerned, um, culturally within a region, um, anywhere. So a theatre plays a critical role Ballarat is a historic place and the theatre in whichever form, be it another building or this current building, um, has played a critical role in the formation of a city. Theatres have a long history of change. There are very few theatres that you walk into that haven't actually had one or two or three iterations in their interiors. And this theatre started as a flat floored hall. It was a music venue, it was a music hall, it had one circle. It was transformed in the 1890s by William Pitt, the architect, a very famous theatre architect, the architect for the Princess Theatre. And so that it was then turned into a lyric theatre and it was when it was first called Her Majesty's. This theatre is a Victorian era theatre with all the flourishes. It's got all the filigree you can imagine and um, beautiful um, styling and touches and it was built with a uh, theatre in mind. A specialist in theatres and industrial buildings, architect William Pitt increased the theatre's capacity by elevating the old single balcony closer to the ceiling and then adding a second balcony, the dress circle below it, thus creating the double horseshoe balconies that still stand today. The stage was also enlarged and a magnificent dome added in the ceiling. Over the decades, there were more changes. New fashions, new owners, new content. In 1965, the renowned Royal South Street Society purchased the theatre, using it as the home of their prestigious Estedford competition. In 1987, the ownership and management of Her Majesty's was handed over to the city of Ballarat, who set about finding the right people to deliver the much needed TLC for the grand old building. We began our involvement at Her Majesty's in about 2016 uh, when we were approached by Council to look at a report that had been produced on where to go next with Her Majesty's. Our role essentially was to come on board as the principal architects for the project and to initially sift through what was a, uh, an amount of work that probably was of a value of $20, $25 million and say, well, we need a first stage that council can afford and what are the priorities? And it's not really until you actually peel back some of the surfaces, particularly with any historic piece of architecture, particularly that as complex and as, as brilliant and as amazing as this venue, that you truly find some of those elements that you sometimes wish you didn't. The theatre for a long time had structural issues both with its stage and with its flying system and the fly tower and what we found as the engineers began to look at this that there were major structural problems with the trusses above the stage and with the stage itself so that part of this first phase in fact was to look at completely rehabilitating the stage house the nature of the restoration was um, all the problems were yet to be found. For example, we removed all the lead paint. We had to try to deal with the rising damp. I think as everyone will be aware, the props and scenery on a the traditional theatre are hung from uh, ropes and cords that hang down from battens in the ceiling from what's called the grid. And so the grid relies on a very solid structure in, in the stage house. And so uh, what happened was the engineers designed new steel trusses that have been inserted, three massive steel trusses. The stage floor was not structurally sound to build a scaffold on for the roof. So part of the project was to pull out the stage floor, rebuild it to where we could get it to a strength rating so that we could then build a scaffold on top of the stage all the way up to the roof. And then the remediation in the roof up there was to build three steel trusses alongside the timber trusses inside the buildings. So I got to see the, the bones of this building that hadn't been exposed um, since it was built. The beautiful elements that we found though were 
um, hand-hewn timbers. Um, this, the stage was rebuilt and through that process um, we got to see those timbers exposed for the first time that were holding up the stage. Um, Hand-forged nails, you know, these rectangular nails that you just think about how somebody had to manually drive in um, into these, you know, hardwood timbers. This is not the first um, restoration project that our company and the local trades have undertaken it's because it does take a, a collaborative approach. Otherwise you can't do these buildings. It's very hard to know what the scope is. Specifically, we had to find a ceramicist um, with the, the heritage toilets in, downstairs. The ceramic drains had been pulled out and replaced. So we had to get um, new ceramic dra drains handmade by a ceramicist. We had a local tradesman here as a sheet metal to fabricate the copper gutters, which is probably a bit of an art. Plasterers, the plastering here is another probably one that's a specialist trade because it involves what we call hydraulic lime, not hydrated lime. So there's no cement products in any of the work that we've done here. The pleasure in this project for me, in a sense as with all of these projects, is about the future. It is about undertaking work that is about ensuring that heritage has a relevance now and will have a relevance and viability in the future. I think when you do a restoration project, um, you always like to tell people that love this theatre and so many people in Ballarat have a connection to it. It doesn't matter where I go, whether I'm talking with young people or I'm talking with friends and I tell them about the project. Um, they always say to me, oh, what have you done? Well, the secret is you can't tell what we've done. What I'm most happiest with is that it actually represents the same that it feels like it did beforehand. However, knowing that it's structurally sound, that you can now knock on that wall and not feel like the paint will give way and the plaster will fall out. We've got a building that's been built on multiple street frontages by hand, with hand-hewn timbers, with heritage just oozing out of it and a uh, an absolutely supportive owner um, who is in a position to ensure that it, it lasts for this community forever. The theatre is a place of building connections. It's about relationships, it's about experiences. The joy of this project, in a sense, is ensuring that we're part of a journey for this building that ensures its relevance, that ensures its functionality. It's a place for everybody and at some point in time there's somebody that's been on this stage who will remember that experience more than many other things in their life.